What if I told you that an aircraft declared dead by its own manufacturer might have a new future, bigger, bolder and more efficient than ever before? Today we're talking about the Bold Bet by Emirates, a staggering $20 billion wager to resurrect the Airbus A380, an aircraft once written off by Airbus itself. Why would a giant airline risk so much when the rest of the industry seems to have moved on? This is the story of how one airline is refusing to let an aviation icon fade into history and why it just might succeed. In 2021, Airbus delivered the final A380 and effectively ended its production line. For most carriers, this marked the closing of the super jumbo chapter, but Emirates did something different. They kept flying, investing and believing. Today, they operate more than 100 A380s, more than any other airline worldwide. Why stay loyal to an aircraft the rest of the aviation world seems to have abandoned? There are three threads – experience, economics and vision. The answer is more than just nostalgia. To understand the revival, we first need to understand the fall. When Airbus unveiled the A380 in the early 2000s, it was heralded as a breakthrough. Double-decked, capable of carrying over 850 passengers and set to revolutionise long-haul travel. But it came with fundamental problems. First, it was heavy. Its maximum takeoff weight reached around 1.2 million pounds, and its structure relied heavily on metal rather than advanced composites. Second, it required four engines, which meant higher fuel burn and complexity compared to twin engine wide bodies. Third, its massive wingspan and size limited the number of airports it could fly to. And fourth, the airline industry's trend had already started shifting towards smaller, more flexible aircrafts that could fly point to point with better efficiency. The program ended not because the A380 didn't work, but because it didn't make financial sense for most airlines. Emirates stands apart. As the largest A380 operator, they've built a comprehensive infrastructure around this aircraft. Maintenance hangars, gates, simulators and crews all tailored to the A380. They didn't just buy a plane, they built a kingdom around it. Because Emirates operates from a major global hub in Dubai, their network of high-density, long-haul routes makes the A380 an ideal fit. With seating for up to 615 passengers in a two-class configuration, Emirates has figured out how to make the A380 work profitably when it's full. When you pack it right, this flying palace becomes a flying profit machine. Enter the A380neo, a proposed rebirth of the aircraft, not as a minor upgrade but a full redesign. New wings, modern composites and revolutionary engines. Sir Tim Clark, Emirates president, has put a proposal on Airbus's table. His concept would dramatically reduce fuel consumption by as much as 25%. Design changes would include a smaller vertical stabilizer to reduce drag, redesigned wings for better lift, and potentially folding wingtips to improve airport compatibility. These updates would capitalize on 20 years of technological evolution that simply didn't exist when the A380 was first launched. Let's talk about what really powers this idea. Literally, the original A380 used engines built with 1990s technology now enters the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan, a next-gen engine capable of more than 87,000 pounds of thrust using composite blades, geared turbofan architecture and compatibility with 100% sustainable aviation fuel. Clark believes this engine alone could improve fuel efficiency by up to 25%. Combined with airframe improvements, that's enough to make the A380neo a competitive player, even against efficient twin-engine jets. But it hinges on the success and timely rollout of these engines. No engine, no Neo. Now let's talk experience, because the A380 isn't just about size, it's about luxury. Passengers consistently rank it among the best aircraft to fly. Why? Spacious cabins, whisper quiet interiors, onboard lounges, showers at 40,000 feet. How many planes can offer you a cocktail and a shower mid-flight? Emirates has used this to its advantage, turning their A380s into flying showcases. In a post-pandemic world where people crave comfort and space, that advantage matters more than ever. These aren't gimmicks, they're marketing tools that command premium ticket prices. Now here's where things get practical. Airport slots. Some of the world's busiest airports, Heathrow, JFK, Narita, are running out of runway slots. You can't add more flights, so what do you do? You add bigger planes. That's the logic Emirates is betting on. The A380neo could carry more passengers per flight, maximizing limited airport capacity. 
This strategy is especially potent for ultra-busy hubs and high-density city pairs. Think Dubai to London, not Des Moines to Denver. The A380neo could be the answer for airlines needing to grow without expanding frequency. Let's be clear, reviving the A380 isn't cheap. Airbus estimates development costs north of $20 billion. Airbus shut down the production line, reassigned teams, dismantled tooling. Restarting it would be a massive undertaking. But Emirates believes it's worth it. With 20-25% lower fuel burn, reduced maintenance costs, and better efficiency per seat, the A380neo could be a smart long-term investment. The challenge? Emirates can't carry the burden alone. Airbus needs more launch customers to make the numbers work. Let's talk timing. Global air traffic is growing, especially in Asia-Pacific, the Middle East, and Africa, regions where Emirates dominates. Airport congestion is only getting worse, and more premium travelers are willing to pay for comfort. Environmental concerns are also pushing airlines to consider fewer flights with more passengers. A large, fuel-efficient aircraft fits that vision. The stars are aligning, but only briefly. If Airbus waits too long, the window might close. Of course, there are big challenges. The production line is gone. Suppliers have moved on. Certification would be complex under today's stricter regulations. Many airlines remain skeptical. Most have retired or plan to retire their A380 fleets. And let's not forget competition. The A350 and Boeing 787 continue to evolve, offering flexibility with lower risk. The A380neo must not just be better, it must be transformative to earn its place. This is a high bar to clear. Despite all that, here's why this could work. Emirates is already committed. They're refurbishing A380s and keeping them flying well into the 2030s. Their brand is intertwined with the AV80. Their infrastructure is tailor-made. For them, this is more than a business move. It's a strategic identity. If a few other carriers join in, especially those with high-density long-haul networks, Airbus might have enough momentum to restart development. And with sustainable aviation fuel, next-gen engines and modern composites, the A380neo could finally become what it was always meant to be. As someone who's watched the aviation industry evolve for years, I can say this. Aviation has always rewarded visionaries, the Wright brothers, Boeing's gamble on the 747. Airbus's original A380 risk, Emirates' $20 billion bet may seem crazy, but in this industry, crazy has often changed the game. Will it work? That depends on timing, tech and trust. But if it does, we may soon see the world's most beloved jet take to the skies again, smarter, greener and grander than ever before. Thanks for joining me on this dive into the potential return of the A380. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss more expert takes on the future of flight. And now I want to hear from you. Would you fly on an A380neo? What routes would you want to see? Drop a comment below and let's talk. Until next time.